Hey guys, this is Christian. Hey guys, I uh, uh, just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we've got something really great and fun and exciting today. Um, you know, I just, I'm really thrilled about what's going on right now. Uh, we've just got a lot of momentum. We've got a lot of people that have, we've got a lot of feedback from, uh, you know, our podcast that we've been pushing out. Uh, so we appreciate everyone that listened to our podcast. We've got a lot of people that are going to be, uh, we're going to be interviewing, uh, which is so exciting just to see what's going on in that podcast arena. Also, I'm going to be invited on several other podcasts uh, to, uh, to obviously share our story, to reach out to other audience and add value. So we're really excited about a lot of these things that are going on right now. Um, and, and we just want to share with you a, a few more other things that are really goal oriented and just give this to you as much as possible. See, you know, when I first started talking about this subject here, or what we're going to be talking about today, are you setting the right goals for yourself? Is I realized this because when I was talking to one of my mentors, multimillionaire, really fun guy, awesome dude, and he said, you know, before you can have business results and, and have these, uh, you know, I want to have, you know, 10,000 customers, I want to have this, this, this. He said, Christian, you have to first have the the work ethic to build the foundation of your business and it really got me to stop thinking and say okay now I have to have the right goals in the right time okay so for example my, my biggest thing is like okay you know what first you know for those that are like side hustle home businesses small business whatever it is you first you just got to build that work ethic and build that daily consistency because you can't start saying well I want to scale Facebook ads when you don't even know how to run a Facebook ad does that make sense? It's the same concept of, oh, I want to scale my thousands of customers when you don't even have customers. So you really want to make sure you stay, okay, basic, build the work ethic, having those right goals. Then all of a sudden you have the next right set of goals and say, okay, you know what? Um, I, I've got a thousand customers. Now I want to start scaling. So how do I start scaling? How do I build funnels? How do I build the, those, those conversion rates to decrease the cost and increase the conversion rates? So those things, those right goals at the right time. You can't say, oh, I want to be a multi-billionaire when you don't even have the foundation set and built. So there is a lot more to goal setting than just picking a goal and moving forward. While this is important, it's also important to ensure that you are setting the right goals at the right time, like I just said, so that you can truly be successful. Because that's the ultimate point, is, is you want to make sure you have the right and clear expectation so it's not like, oh, I want to be a multi-billionaire, and then all of a sudden you never get there because you never put actionable steps. You can't be a multi-billionaire overnight, so what do you do? You, you've got to put into play certain actionable steps every single day in that time frame. In order to ensure that you are setting the right goals for yourself, answer the following questions, okay? So during this time, this new decade, what's going to be your 5, 10-year, 15-year goals, okay? So answer these questions to be able to identify those. Okay, are you specific? Sorry, sorry, are you setting specific and realistic goals? It takes a little research to ensure that a goal is realistic. If you're not sure if something is actually achievable, then you've not done enough research. Once you set a goal that is indeed realistic, then you need to be specific enough in your description of it so that it's also easy to take the goal and work backward to create a schedule of actions needed to succeed. So for example, I've said this numerous times and I want to say this as many times as possible because what that does is it creates accountability every single one of you because if I don't create this then guess what uh, you guys can tell me that I, I didn't do it I want to build 1400 pieces of content in 90 days and not just you know small pieces of content as in like 1400 pieces of content of YouTube videos anchor podcasts LinkedIn podcasts and, and, and articles and the reason why I want to do that is just to push out and add value as much as possible and so in order to do that, I had to work backwards in 90 days. Okay, what does that equate to? About 20 pieces of content every single day, which is, you know, uh, if, if each one is about 10, 15 uh, minutes long, well, then guess what? That's about five hours a day. And so I have to wake up a little earlier to create that stuff and do that. So it is what it is. Second, are your goals multifaceted? Focusing on only one part of your goal is a bad idea. People live multifaceted lives, and they make goals for all areas of their lives in order, to be, in order to feel successful. If you have a wonderful business and career, but your personal life suffers, then no matter how successful you are, you will, f you will, you will not feel successful. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter how successful you are in those areas, you'll not feel successful because your, your personal life is... is down 
Something will always feel as if it's missing from your life if your goals aren't inclusive. Therefore, make sure your goals include something from each aspect of your life, relational, spiritual, financial, family. Once you create the schedule for your, uh, oh, oh, and also, you guys, uh, before I go into the next one here, is, is, your, is your scheduling representative of real need, okay? Once you create the schedule for yourself to teach each goal that you've set, you need to truly consider how representative it is of reality. Say your goal is to be healthy and reduce your cholesterol by like 10% in six months, but you haven't set aside the time needed to exercise and eat right. If you don't schedule in the time needed, you won't succeed because something will always be in your way taking time away from you. So like for example, if I put, I want to build 1400 pieces of content in 90 days, but I don't invest the time and I don't schedule the time to do this, guess what? It's not going to be created and guess what? I'm going to have that high expectation, not done, I've not done the, res, uh, created uh, the scheduled time, and guess what? I'm going to fail. And, but hey, you know what? I want to make sure I schedule that time so I can achieve that goal. Are you learning from failure? That's what it is. Life is about living and then learning and readjusting and living. Many times when setting goals and schedules, instead of learning from failure, people just give up. I was at a point in my life where I was very close to just totally giving up the entrepreneurial life. And I was fortunate where someone still believed in me. And there was a, there was a point where I just, I realized a job was never going to create the results out of life that I wanted. It was never going to obtain my goals and dreams and, and visions that I had. Using the example that we just talked about, once you implement your schedule to reach the goals that you have set, when you notice there are things you forgot to take into account, don't give up. Keep going. Reignite it. Be surrounded by the right people. Find mentors and coaches that believe in you before you believe in your own self. Learn from the failure and change the schedule to be more realistic. You might find that in practice you have to rewrite all your goals and your schedule to make it more realistic, but that is perfectly acceptable. Many people believe failure is something negative, but the truth is if you don't fail, sometimes you're not going to learn much and it's like, likely your goals are too easy. The whole point of what John Maxwell talks about is failing forward failing as much and as often as possible. The reason why you see a lot of these people are very successful is because they failed so much, so fast, and quicker than you. And that's the reason why they are at where they are at. The reason why my wife and I are at where we are at financially and relationally, because we can mentor and coach hundreds of couples, because we failed over and over and over again, but we've been able to identify a system that was able to create results for other couples and other families. Do your goals represent your needs and wants or someone else's? You have to be identify that. A lot of people set goals that represent what someone else wants instead of what they want. This can really cause a lot of bad feelings and resentment which can derail the best laid plans. As you set your goals for your life, ask yourself if they really want what you want for yourself or what someone else wants for you. Ask yourself if you're okay with any goal you make being for someone else before you embark on your journey. Is this goal set for me, for my satisfaction, or not? A lot of people, when I dropped out of college and went more the entrepreneur route, a lot of my family and friends that love me said, you're doing the wrong thing. You're being stupid. You're never going to be able to do it. Blah, blah, blah. And guess what? I realized that if I pursued the college degree, it wasn't going to satisfy me because my goals and dreams were above and beyond those, what a job or what a college degree could provide. And I just had to face it. And I visualized something that other people don't visualize. And that's what you have to realize as well. Ask yourself if you're okay with any goal you're making and go do that journey. It's okay to do things because of someone else, but it's important that you are honest about that and make some goals for yourself. Don't involve anyone else's needs or wants. It's okay if you want to. Are you checking in often to stay on track? 
Every single day you should be doing that. You should check in on your goals. You should check in. Actually, um, sometimes people look at it as, as a little too much. So what I do is I look at my goals every single day. But to see tracking status, my wife and I do this every 90 days. So financially, we do a big financial meeting and a review of our goals and dreams as a family. And what happens is we can take a look. Okay, are we on, on set? What do we need to adjust? Some people do it every six months. Some people do it every... Um, I found that night every 90 days for some odd reason 90 days is where you know we're able to re regroup readjust we look at things and and reassess and, and keep going forward that's what I would suggest you know schedules are very important uh, to the success of reaching any goal in life to-do list pale in comparison uh, you just don't do a to-do list you've got to put it on a schedule um, ensure that you look at your schedule every morning and every night and note when you succeed on your on your schedule and when you don't Kind of do on a Sunday evening and say, okay, this is where I need to work on. This is what I realize my own productivity time, whatever. Noticing a pad of activity can be helpful in fixing a poorly written schedule, as well as staying realistic about whether or not you're sticking to the plan. Some activities may take longer than you expect, and so guess what? You Next week, you just have to readjust and say, okay, i got to give more time for this. This took too much time. i got to wake up earlier. Whatever it is, and readjust. Constantly keep doing that. Are your goals focused positively? This is a really good one, and I didn't really realize this until I, I, I read a book that really kind of helped me identify this. I was like, oh, I never really saw this. So, for example, when writing a goal, it's important to write them in a positive way, or at least a way that feels positive to you. In the quest to improve your life, try writing down a goal and then changing the words to sound more positive to see if it isn't more motivating. For instance, losing weight. Seems like a good goal, but for some people it might signify deprivation or depression. So instead, the person might frame the goal as improving my BMI by 10 points, right? Or improving my cholesterol by 10 points. Whatever it is, all of a sudden that said, oh, I can, I can do that. Improving, in, in, uh, increasing, developing, producing, whatever it is. Those positive words. Do you have too many goals set at one time? This is something that I struggle with all the time. In fact, I remember when I would read a book at the beginning of the year and I'd write down I mean, like 20 different goals for my financial, 20 different goals for my personal, 20 different, and I'd just be overwhelmed. And I'm like, I don't know how to do all this. I don't know how to implement it. And I get overwhelmed and I wouldn't do it and wouldn't produce it. But guess what? What was incredible is when I started realizing who I am and how I do things. Even when I read a book, I read a book, and what I try to do is I implement whatever that said, and then I come back to reading the book, and then implement the next part. That's just the way I learn, and that's just the way I realize that's how I do things. Uh, I don't get through books. My goal isn't to get through books like, like, oh, read a book, read a book. My goal is to really implement what that book says, definitely in the self-help, improvement, um, you know, uh, arenas. So. Just as setting too few goals can be a problem, guys, so can setting too many. If you have too many, it is overwhelming. Everyone has a personal life and a, and a career life and points in between. So if you have a set goal in too many areas of life at once, you might tire yourself out and get overwhelmed. Instead, pick one personal goal and one other type of goal to focus on until you reach them, and then you can add more goals. That's why every 90 days is so powerful. You can normally achieve that, uh, those, those goals or be on that right trajectory, that path, in 90 days. You don't need to do everything today, okay? Slow and steady wins the race is a good motto to hang on. One of the best books I read is something that says, changing 1% every day in one year, you can change 365%, which is incredible if you really think about it. Setting the right goals for yourself. Take some thought and consideration. Don't try to set all your goals in one day. Instead, set some goals in different stages and in different areas of your life and give a lot of thought to why you're making the goals in the first place. Guys, that's what it is. Implement those things. Realize what it is. And you, you start understanding that. Are you setting the right goals for yourself in the right a lot of time during whatever time period you're in? Are you at the beginning of building a business? Are you, you know, in the middle where you're, you're, you want to scale your business? Or are you very large and you've done your scales of your business? Now you want to look at, you know, succession. Whatever it is, you have to realize where you're at and make that happen. Guys, go ahead and implement this. Make sure you subscribe. If you're motivated and ambitious and you know it, definitely subscribe. 
like this, share this with your friend and family. And until next time, guys.